You take a deep sip of tea, enjoying the the floral flavors and the, the naturalness of it and the notes of honey and the notes of toasted almond. Roll for saves. This is episode uh, three. Yay, we made it to three. This one, um, we're going to generate a plot. Uh, so this is uh, heavily inspired by the Tech Noir uh, role playing game, Tech Noir, uh, Mech Noir. They were going to make one called Hex Noir, but it never got done. I wish it did. Um, so, this is a system for uh, just having things happen in the world around the character. The In Tech Noir, the characters start off. Uh, uh, connected to three people within the city. Um, but this one, I'm going to, I'm kind of skipping that to see how it works without it. Uh, oh, I have to pick my main character. I almost forgot. So, um, yeah. All right. So we had uh, three characters last time. We had Ugby, Thacky, Jafing, and Lath. Um I'm personally leaning towards uh, Jafing. I like Jafing as a a uh, nautical uh, magic user, um, and I haven't really, I haven't beta tested magic enough. I feel so. I think that's going to be the best, um, the best one to really help me test the system. So I'm going to copy this one here, X. And I'm going to paste it up here at the top. V, and I didn't close that other window. Do that now. Bye-bye window. Okay, that window is closed. And then the rest of this, um, I'm going to delete those characters because characters are super easy to create. Delete table. Nope, delete the whole table. There we go. And I can take off that placeholder. Okay, so we have Jafing, the nautical uh, person. Um, I'm going to say she used to be a pirate, um, and she is, she's very quick study. Um, she learned to read. She learned a little bit of magic. She can, uh, summon a spirit and she's, uh, likes her jug of grog. That should be a D six. And she also likes her, uh, machete and she's kind of practiced at swinging it around. And that's all we have. Um, Characters are very short in this, and that's on purpose. I closed the window, but it's still showing the cursor there. Oh, well. Catch up, Google. So let's generate a, a plot. So if you look in the top left window, I have a couple of little squares. These were where I'm going to put the uh, items from the plot. Uh, the Tech Noir has a 6 by 6 table for each city that you go to. And they have items and factions and such that occur. So I made more generalized tables. Um, and it's actually six by six by six. And I originally made these as cards. And you draw a card. Um, and then, so there's 36 cards. And then you, you draw a card and roll a D6. And that gives you one item off that card. And instead, I just got all table form here for this game. I'm going to roll 3d6. Um, the first one, I'm going to go in the list at the bottom. Uh, the first one is number one. So that's a person, which is good. We need people to deal with. Um, number two is going to be an enforcer, and it says it's a detective. So uh, I'm going to go into my plot map, and I'm going to write uh, uh, police detective. And I'll generate a name in a little bit. And I'm going to re-roll 3d6, get another item. So that one's a four. Um, that's a location. Four, next is a one. That's for logistics. And the last one is a five. And that means it's a terminal station. Um, mm, we'll say they're just starting a train line, uh, an electric train line and the new continent. And it's a it's a train station, the the main train station, like a kind of like a Grand Central Station or something, right? 
I'm going to write Grand Central Station. Okay, that's good enough for now. And then I'm going to roll it again. I have a six, a four, and a five. So that goes down to, oops, that should be five, four. Rumor should be six. All right. Um. So six. Number four is supernatural, and a five is a new cult. Rumor, new cult. All right. So there's a police detective. Um, something's happening at Grand Central Station to deal with a new cult. And this is the part where, as I said, it's live. Um, it's going to be a little bit of hemming and hawing in here. So the police detective, um, maybe the police detective uh, suspects are uh, Jafing. Is Jafing male or female? I don't know. I didn't roll for this character, I don't think. So odd is male. That's the way I usually do it. Jafing is a male. Uh, goes by Jafe for short. And they they suspect that Jafing, either they suspect Jafing is uh, a member of the cult and is trying to pin something on them or trying to recruit Jafing for the cult or wants Jafing's help in uh, infiltrating the cult. Right, could be one, it, I, either, I, any of those. Um, so if you don't know, uh, solo RPGs, one of the ways to uh, emulate having a GM is asking yes or no questions. Um, and there are many systems for uh, determining if it's a yes or a no. Um, for this system, uh, what I do is I'm just going to roll uh, three six sided dice, and then if it's four or higher then it's favorable or yes. If it is uh, three or less, then it's uh, unfavorable for the character or it's a no, depending on how the question is phrased. And then um, if I think it's more likely to be no or unfavorable, then I'll switch out a D6 or two D6s for a D4, um, possibly all of them if it's really unfavorable, which in that case, why roll? Um, but if it's very favorable, I'll switch out a die for a D12. And at first, that sounds very imbalanced of D4 versus a D12. But mathematically, the balance is the same because um, one through three is unfavorable. So that means on a D4, you have 75% unfavorable. And then on a D12, that means four and anything higher, four through 12 is favorable. And on a D12, four through 12 is 75%. So it's really balanced, even though it it just breaks my mind to think that going from a D4 is 75-25, D6 is 50-50, and D12 is 25-75. Like it, it just breaks my mind trying to, to parse that. But that's the way maths work. Um, so I'm going to roll some D sixes here. I'm going to ask questions. Um, the first two are no, then the last one is obviously true. So the questions are going to be, um, suspects Jafing to be in the cult. Mm, now I'm going to put that as last question. First one, um, uh, trying to recruit Jafing into the cult. Uh, that's the first question. Second question will be. Uh, are they trying to get Jafing to help them infiltrate or snuff out, sniff out the cult? And then the last one is suspect Jafing to be in the cult. That one's kind of obvious and not very exciting to me. So we're going to roll 3d6. And we got, yes. Um, so the first one was uh, trying to get Jafing to join the cult. Um, so the police detective is a member of a cult. Expand this one out a little bit. Police detective, uh, cult, and what kind of cult is it? I'm gonna roll up here. Um, so these are my oracles, and I'm gonna use faction because cult is basically a faction. Uh, I already know it's gonna be a religion because it's a cult. So now I'm gonna do goals and strengths, markers and locations. So that's gonna be uh, 10, 12, 6, and 6. 
let's see, uh, D10, D12, and 2D6. All right, we have a seven that is going to be infiltrate. So the cult wants to infiltrate things. Um, that that makes sense. They they got police detectives. They're trying to get someone um from the sea. So maybe they're trying to do some smuggling and such. Uh, eight is obfuscation. Um, they're very sneaky. Um, they're very good at hiding who they really are. Their marker is the first one's a one. Uh, a color. So what color do they like? I'll figure out later. And they meet in the wilderness. They like to meet in the wilderness. Uh, colors is a D10. That's a two yellow. All right, the yellow. Yellow in the wilderness. They're very good at hiding and they want to infiltrate, we'll say the government or something. Um, okay, this is an interesting uh, group. They, hmm. So they're infiltrating, trying to gain power, um, trying to sway politics to their side. That's that's a good idea. I like that. Um, is the cult cool with magic? I think that's heavily yes. Um, I think that they're trying to recruit magic users. Or are they trying to recruit magic users? So I'm going to roll heavily yes. 1d12, I'm going to do 1d12. That's a 1. And 2d6, that's a 3d3. Three, three. That, no, no, they don't care about magic at all. Um, Then what is their goal? Mm, their goal is infiltrate, but what are they trying to infiltrate for? Why do they want to infiltrate? Uh, not for magic. Okay. Maybe they just want people that have uh, ties to power and money, and they're just trying to build up their power and money, their base, and it's not necessarily magical-based. All right, so they just want power and money. All right. Infiltrate. Yellow. Wilderness. I might have misspelled that off skate. That's fine. Okay. All right. New cult. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to say they want to infiltrate for power and money. So they're looking for members uh, with ties to power and money. Um, Jafing, uh, being a sailor, has a lot of access to shipping lanes and shipping knowledge. Um, can arrange for ships to sink if they want to make a supply uh, more rare, more valuable. And what's going on with Grand Central Station? Um, they meet in the wilderness, so they don't meet at the station. What are they trying to do at the station? Um, we'll say the Grand Central Station is at the docks. So things can easily come off the ship and go onto the trains. So they, they brought the train tracks as close as they could to the docks. Um, and are they planning to attack the trains? I think that one's going to be very likely. So again, a D12 and 2D6. Yes, absolutely yes. Four, four, six. All right. Um, absolutely. Yes, they are trying to uh, attack the station. So they are trying to get uh, Jafing involved. Um, they want Jafing. So nautical doesn't necessarily mean that you're a boat worker, but it could mean that um, it could mean that they are just a dock worker or such, something of that nature. So what we'll do is, uh, what do we do? Um, yeah, I think Jafing is going to be a dock worker. And they want Jafing to uh, either carry out a task or to um, uh, either carry out a task or make it easier for them to get in and carry out a task. Maybe Jay Fing is like a night watch. Is Jay Fing night watch? 
50-50. Yes, Jfing is night watch at the docks. All right. So uh Jfing. Make a note, Jfing. Uh I want to put this at regular text. All right. And we have da, 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 da. so they might not even know that Jfing has this uh magic spell. All right, so here, here. Oh, I don't want that. I want to do text. Type. Member. And I'll move this down. And this is going to be another line. Member and text. Want to disrupt, destroy. I try to make the default text larger, but I have not found a way to do that on here yet. And I always hate how the text boxes are just huge. All right, he's a member of that. And so he's going to try to get in touch with Jfing to help with that. All right. Um, I'm going to put Jfing in here. Uh, Jfing. Please detective uh, text. Approaches. And that'll be our first scene. And then one more line. Jfing works here. There. All right. I know that was great for the podcast. Um, so we have rumor of a new cult. Um, they're looking for power and money. They use infiltration and obfuscation. Uh, their sign is something yellow and they like to meet in the wilderness. So, um, the city is large, the city is large, but it's, it's, we're still a lot of countryside around it. It's like America in the 1800s, 1700s, 1800s. Um, so there's a Grand Central Station at the dock. That is where Jfing works. The cult is wanting to uh, destroy some stuff coming in. So they're going to cause a large explosion or something, maybe. Um, a police detective is a member of the cult and is looking to recruit Jfing so Jfing can help with this. And I need to make the detective's name. So I'm going to roll some tens and twenties. I get some random numbers. I got 16 and a six. What do we have? 16 and six Y and a K. A 16, six, nine Y, K, N. And what do we have for a vowel? Uh, three, seven, six, three, seven, six, one, three, seven, six, one, three, seven. Six A A. We got A A. All right. So we have I'm gonna give him a simple name. Simple name, simple name. Nine seven. Na Nala 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 Nala. All right. Oh, wrong one. Wrong one. I hate how big those things are. All right. So this is Nala the police detective. Okay. So Nala's police detective, cult member. Uh, trying to get contact with Jfing to uh, get them to uh, take out the cold. So we'll say Jfing is um, on the way home one day. Jfing's on the way home and Nala rolls up and uh, Jfing has Jfing done anything bad? Yes, Jfing Jfing thinks that he's in trouble. And he sees this officer uh walking up behind him. Hears him first, right? It's it's uh pre-dawn. 
Uh, he's he's night watch, so it's pre dawn. He's going home. Uh, he he hears this uh person walking behind him, tack 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 on the cold cobblestones. Um, most most of the city's quiet yet. And then, uh, turns and sees this this person walking through the fog, and just books it, just runs and runs, um, and tries to avoid uh, Nala, but um, does Nala catch chafing? I'm gonna roll a skill roll for this. Um, oops, wrong button. So does Nala catch chasing? I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the, this uh, chafing. I'm gonna roll this as a uh, as a save. If if chafing fails, uh, not only will Nala catch him, but uh, Nala will go into uh, uh, like a bad cop mode and use uh, intimidation to get chafing to to do what they want. So I will say. I'm going to say Jafing lives near the docks, so they're still in the docks. So we're going to go up to D8, and I don't think anything else would help. Um, Jafing has the leather jack, helm, and large knife, which is kind of standard for uh, the the docks watch. And the, the police officer is going to try to catch them and knock them down. So just rolling a D8, and that's a 5. Um, so... Jafing is not caught. Um, maybe gets cornered and caught, but not like beaten and caught. Uh, that was going to be the consequence was that uh, the Nala was going to go into like bad cop mode. But instead, uh, tracks, uh, chases Jafing down, uh, stops Jafing in front of the tenements. And, Oi, why are you running from me? I just want to talk to you, son. Uh, 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 what 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 what's wrong, officer? Uh, can I help you? I was just heading home. You're 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 Jafing, right? The the night watch down at the docks. Uh, yes, sir. It's 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 uh the private, um, private security. But yes, I'm I'm serving night watch down at the docks. The at the train station. Oh, good. I I I have a proposal for you. Um. And Nala is going to say, mm, this is totally, uh, totally off the books. Um, so just between you and I, so uh, are, are you hungry? You want, you want to go get some breakfast or dinner as it would be? Uh, yes, sure. yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that's, that's fine. So, uh, Nala is going to take Jafing to like, um, what would be the equivalent of a diner? Uh, in this time, it's kind of like a, like a a bed and breakfast, uh, a house that someone's opened up for some tenements and everything, and you can come in and you know pay a little money to get some um breakfast, even if you're not staying in the night. And so they go there, and uh, it's still early, so the table's pretty much empty. Nala, the I'm gonna say the uh. The proprietor of this place is part of the cult. And so uh, Nala knows the proprietor and is not afraid to speak about what's going on at this place. So Nala um, sits chafing down and says, listen, um, my friends and I were, uh, I got some friends doing some smuggling and uh I need you to uh, to let us get some cargo unloaded, um, and it's 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 our cargo. We, we just want to unload it before the customs and everything comes in. Uh, don't worry, it's not going to show up as missing. You're not going to get in trouble for having things stolen out from under your nose. We just need a chance to get in here, uh, grab the cargo, and get out uh, before it would be inspected and uh, suffer the excise tax or a tariff, whatever it would be. Um, Jafing is... Uh, does the police officer know Jafing's in trouble? Mm -hmm. 
nah, he doesn't know. Nala doesn't know that. So you can't hold that over uh, Jafing. And so Jafing's going to say, uh, look, I does Jafing agree or not? Mm, I don't have a good handle on this character yet. I'm going to roll random. Uh, no, Jafing does not want to help. Uh, Jafing says, uh, look, officer, um, I, I I appreciate you coming to me with this, um, but I don't want to know what's going to happen. And honestly, I just can't let it happen. I, I'm fairly new at my job here. That's why they stuck me on the night shift. It's the worst shift. Um, but I don't want to be in trouble. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get promoted. Um, I, I just want to make sure that everything goes smoothly. So I hope you understand, officer, but I can't really help you here. Um, the, the officer Nala finishes his, uh, his, his pancake and looks chafing in the eye and says, that's that's very admirable of you, and I, I understand that. But if you were to help us out, uh, there'd be room for promotion in in other directions. If you get my drift, and Jafing, um, so I just kind of established he's young, so I'm going to say he's kind of um, clueless as well. So he's like, what? What's that? I I, I don't really. I don't really understand, sir. Like, you know, I, I, I'm new at my job. I want to do well at my job. I don't want to lose my job. All right, so I'm going to stop here for just a second. And I'm going to use the sign on my Oracle. Oh, so this is D12. Actually, 12, uh, I'm going to throw 3D12. 117, that's no help. All right, Archivist Blade. And seven arrayed. Uh, okay, so these people they have a a yellow pen, a golden pen of a like a, a scimitar. A scimitar is the one I'm thinking of, like a curved blade, like a saber. Um, and they keep it pinned. Uh inside of like a fold of cloth so they can kind of open the cloth and show it somewhere. So uh, under a roll of sleeve or under a lapel or something. And that's their sign that they remember. And then, um, so it's actually, it's a raid. So I'm going to say it's a symbol of uh, five scimitars, five sabers um arrayed like fanned out and so the handles kind of blur together but there's five curved blades um kind of like a peacock's tail if you can picture that and they call themselves the blade archivists and that gives me what they're trying to do they are trying to um trying to gain power influence by controlling the artifacts in and out um, so they're trying to quote unquote archive these artifacts, and um, so they're trying to archive the artifacts to uh, keep them from making world powers stronger. Um, their ultimate goal is freedom, uh, freedom for their oh, what am I thinking? Their their colony and. They're a cult because they actually they worship the the lost people and they they worship them and really venerate them. And so these artifacts are kind of holy to them. So they don't want to damage the artifacts, but they do want to stop them from getting in the wrong hands and being profaned um and uses of, of war and oppression. Yes, that sounds great. All right. So we are at the 30 minute mark and that is my goal for these episodes. And as such, I'm going to stop this recording, type up what I just said, and I'll see you next session. Um, with that being said, uh, 
happy gaming and good luck and goodbye.